Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections number eight. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. We got two guys today, two guys who aren't who you think of when you think of the New York Giants, but two guys who probably will have some important roles. We got Cameron Fleming and Kyler Fackrow. Justin, what's going on, my man? Bobby Skinner, two new faces to the 2020 team. I think one were a little bit more excited than the other. Um, there's also one person that does that. Uh, there's a portion of Giants Twitter that says that this person should be starting at left tackle. But anyway, by portion you mean like two people? Yeah, by that, that portion I mean by two people. But my Let's fun talk fact about the guy. My fun fact about Cam Fleming is that he went to the University of Stanford, so that's a well-known fact, I guess. Stanford team, Levine Tololo, Caden Smith. Oh, just adds to that Giants pedigree. There's one more. Can't think of who it is. Oh, Blake Martinez. There you go. There you go. Just adds to that Giants pedigree that we got going on right now. But It was Stanford versus Georgia until DeAndre Baker um, Mm. did what DeAndre Baker did. And Alec Ogletree. Yep. Rest in, peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, went to Stanford and I looked up his major. His major was aero. I don't even know if I'm saying this right. Aeronautics and astronautics. Do you know what that is? Just by guessing, Bobby. I don't know. I just I'm guessing airplanes. That's what I'm guessing. Airplanes yeah. and Air? space. Yeah, Place, no space planes. No, you're no. That's actually space ships, spot- as someone called them. That's actually spot on. Aerospace engineering is the primary field of engineering concerned with the development of aircraft and spacecraft. It has two major overlapping branches, which is aeronautical engineering and astronautical engineering. So that's what Cameron Fleming majored in in college. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to be a football player and just major in like communications. No, he went all out. Well, so I'm I guess trashing all our communication majors <laughs> out there. I think Danny's going to be a communications major. No, it's it's a good thing, but a lot of athletes just do communications or sociology. I'm also I, I I come from a branch of sociology, so I'm even trashing myself. But yeah, if you see Cam Fleming on the street, ask him how much he knows about like airplanes and stuff. I'm a big space guy. I live at where the Kennedy Space Center is. Uh, mm. I'm a big NASA guy. All right, Cam Fleming, six foot six, three hundred twenty pounds. Justin, he's going to be 28 years old when the season starts in 2014. He was drafted in the fourth round by the New England Patriots. Giants brought him in on a one-year $3.5 million deal. He started three games for the Dallas Cowboys last year at left tackle. Started three games in 2018 for the Dallas Cowboys and then 20 games in four years at guard and tackle for the New England Patriots. Justin, we assumed he was going to be a backup when this guy joined the Giants with the Nate Solder news. I think we're assuming he's the starter at right tackle week one. Yeah, absolutely. And gosh, because we talk about from the standpoint of putting Andrew Thomas at left tackle, and that's the best spot for this 2020 Giants team. But what's the unfortunate part about the Nate Solder news? There's a lot of unfortunate parts of that Nate Solder news uh, just on a football and personal level. But if we're just talking solely football, the most unfortunate part of that is that now we have a right tackle question, and that question is basically Cam Fleming. It could be Nick Gates, um, but we're not going to talk about that. That's for maybe another day. Bobby, I'll just get into maybe my thoughts about Cam Fleming because this is actually the player out of everybody that we've, that we've previewed so far in our PPPs. Cam Fleming is the guy that I rewatched the most tape of, and I went back to multiple years to see what he did and how he did. And Bobby, there is nothing athletically that Fleming does that impresses me. There, there is, there is nothing. I really tried to find something. I watched 2019 when he was a fill in left tackle for the Cowboys. I watched 2017 when he was a right tackle, watched him start in the Super Bowl, and it wasn't terrible, but nothing that I really got excited over Bobby. And this is, I know I'm I'm kind of, I'm kind of taking your thunder about evaluation of a player right now, but he doesn't seal off his blocks in the run game. He doesn't move to the secondary level. Well, he rarely comes off his own double teams hit the lack of athleticism that I talked about. It shows in his past sets. He has to abandon when he's doing his, his kickback in his regular past sets. He has to abandon that and he has to cross his feet sometimes to, to recover from a speedy edge rusher. And that speedy edge rusher, at least in Super Bowl 52 was Chris Long, who isn't, who isn't really a speedy edge rusher. Um, he can get the job done, but it doesn't look pretty while he does it. Um, Mike Remmers, much, much better. 
than yes. Cam Fleming. Yes. Mike Remmers is definitely better than Cam Fleming. That, that being said, Cam Fleming wasn't brought in to start at right tackle. He was brought in to be the backup swing tackle. That's just been activated way sooner than we thought. Um, the Green Bay game was the game I watched of him the most because I saw what Nate Solder did against Green Bay. And while it wasn't good, it was better than how Nate Solder fared in that game. Yeah. And that was in a dome, which is an advantage for edge rushers, where the Giants and Snow, like where that's an advantage for offensive linemen, got, was done way worse <laughs> than, than Cam Fleming. So that is not really a compliment, but it is like a looking at the brights. It's like a, a silver lining to this is that he wasn't as bad as Nate Solder. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that he's worse than Nate Solder, but in that game, he wasn't as bad as Solder. Um, right tackle, you could deal with a little bit more struggle than you can at your left tackle. The whole just, hey, it's happening in front of you instead of behind you. So I'm not like high on Fleming. I don't expect him to be very good. Um, but I, don't, I also don't expect him at the right tackle role to wreck, game for, wreck games for us. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he, I think he can have a bad game and it won't totally wreck us the way Nate Solder at left tackle would have a horrible game and it would like put points on the board for the other team. Yeah, I, I certainly hope not. And you mentioned how he wasn't brought in here to be a starter. There has not been a single season where Cam Fleming has gotten more than 42% of the offensive snaps um, and even that was even back in 2015. Um, he had 23% of the snaps in Dallas in 2019, 2018. He had 22% 2017, the year that he started in the Super Bowl at right tackle with the Patriots. He had 32% of the offensive team snaps. So, uh, yikes, yikes. Do you think that it ever gets to a point where Nick Gates is at center because I think that's where, you know, kind of the tea leaves are pointing that way. You've said that before on, on, a, on the podcast, Bobby. But do you ever think it gets to a point where the Giants could pull the trigger where it's that bad with Cam Fleming that Matt Parrott has to come in here? I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of throwing Parrott out there. I don't think he's ready. I think he is someone who would, like, it would cause him harm to go out there and be thrown out into that mix early. Give him a year to work on his craft. Parrott's obviously way more athletic than Cam Fleming. Yeah. You know, he's stronger. He, I would, tr if you just asked me in the run game, I would be, if, if we're talking about, if we were going to run the ball 80 times in a game and pass the ball zero, I'd be like, just go throw Parrott out there. Let him, let him be an athletic guy. Yeah. Let Cause him, Bobby, the main thing that frustrates me, and I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off, but the main thing that frustrates me about Fleming, I don't know if I saw one time where he came off of a double team and he moved to the secondary level. Not once, and that's frustrating because Saquon Barkley has historically been a much better running back when he's running to his right side. He primarily holds the ball in his right hand. He rarely ever switches hands. He rarely ever switches hands. So when you're running to the right side, you have the ball in your right hand, the sidelines to your right side. You have that left hand for stiff arms, and we've seen Saquon Barkley put up some highlight-worthy plays when he's able to stiff arm guys, um, and that would be on – that's on camera Fleming's side this year. So I hope the run blocking, because of Fleming's presence, doesn't take more of a step back. I mean, it's, it's, it already wasn't that good, that great to begin with, but I hope it doesn't even take more of a step back because of his presence. Because Remmers was solid. Remmers had like a mean streak to him. Remmers got off the stance pretty good. And at, least, and at least Remmers had the excuse of a back injury and he was playing guard with the Vikings back in 2018. I mean, 2019, Remmers had this track record of, you know, like I said, being nasty. He did very well moving to the secondary level and he was adequate and average enough in pass protection. Um, I Remmers think, was fine. He's, yeah. like, he's a loss to this team. Yeah. Um, I don't think, like you said, they weren't expecting that Solder to not be a part of this team. Um, Remmers had two g bad games in my mind. One was against Arizona and Chandler Jones in a game where Daniel Jones, if there's any game you could point to where Daniel Jones held onto the ball too long, it was that game. And then the second game against Demarcus Lawrence, which the first game of the year, he handled Demarcus Lawrence. Um, so Remmers was a loss to this team. And uh, people bring up like, well, Solder and Remmers – had the most pressures allowed to, like, as a tackle duo. And it just reminds me of Tracy McGrady and Jawan Howard being the top scoring duo in Orlando. It's like, it's not Jawan Howard that's doing <laughs> that. It's just that Trace McGrady's averaging 34 yeah. a game. And then the second best guy is just uh, doing that. And Shaq and Kobe, that was their first year apart. Anyways, deep to early 2000s basketball cut right there. So I'm not 
pumped about Fleming at all. I think it's this has probably been the most negative player profile projection we've done so far. Yeah. It definitely is. Yeah. And, and I think part of why we have to kind of be the dose of reality to Giants fans right now is because nobody, not a lot of people are really talking about Cameron Fleming's game. A lot of people are talking about Nick Gates because he's exciting. But Cameron Fleming is probably going to be the starting right tackle. And right tackle is a very important spot. So we need to talk about how, what we're going to expect from that spot. Yeah. And this spot could very well be the, the worst part of this offensive line this year. I think a big part of it, though, is I think we're actually confident from left tackle to right guard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, everyone's com- confident in Zeitler. Hernandez, as much as he gets picked on for his uh, year last year, I think we're all confident he'll be fine this year. Gates, we're all confident. And then Andrew Thomas is Andrew Thomas. So, um, I think that's why. All right, do we got anything else on this guy? Do we have to keep, do we have to tr- keep trashing him? Can we move on? No, let's move on. All right. 